where I can have a little balance of art, a balance of family. So the combination of family, love, friends, and art, it's uh, pretty much the path I'm, I'm searching for. Grew up in, uh, between LA and Santa Ana, and uh, it was an interesting upbringing. You know, uh, my father's from uh, French Polynesia, Tahiti and Marquesas, where tattooing had been in the, a tradition of the people for a long time. So I grew up with a lot of tribal patterns around me, a lot of books on Marquesan men with all the tattoos. But because my father was uh, Polynesian, he had different habits. I didn't really grow up with a lot of toys around. He always handed me a pencil. I spent a lot of my time drawing. That was my pastime. I don't know if it was a tourism pastime, but it was handed to me, and uh, I enjoyed it. But I spent a lot of years uh, drawing from an early age, and uh, as time went by, I came to love art and self. As I was getting older, I started painting. Art had always played a huge role in my life. I think I had always taken art classes in school, when I went to junior college, I took some courses there. I don't think there was ever a time in my life where I didn't have art involved in my life. It was definitely the pivotal moment when I was working at the casino where I decided I had to get out of the casino business and uh, had to try something. So when I had that opportunity to get that apprenticeship with Franco, I jumped on it ASAP. Uh, without any hesitation, moved my entire family. I was definitely going to try for that, whether I failed or not. If it meant that I got to get into the tattoo industry and do art every day, I was going to do that. The apprenticeship uh, definitely took a toll on uh, my relationship at the time. The only person that was really supporting me at the time was my ex-wife. Uh, you know, just for normal reasons, the relationship ended on its own, but uh, I would definitely say my dedication was probably uh, imbalanced. So, but at the time she supported me and uh, until that ended, and then after that, I uh, did the finish off the rest of my apprenticeship living in my grandmother's uh, study. Lived with her for about a year in her study until I got myself on my feet. I, de I definitely thank my grandmother, and at the time, my ex-wife, for supporting me through the beginning stages. But I would definitely say my grandmother played a huge role. She bought my first machine for me. She said there was not many things she got to do for me, and she wanted to participate in something that she thought mattered to me. So she bought me my first Mickey Sharps, which was really cool. It definitely can be difficult juggling both because a huge part of me wants to be out there in the industry that I love, doing what I love, participating and in being involved as much as I can in the tattoo industry, the art industry uh, that comes along with it, and all the my peers that I've gotten to know, family's really big, so it's really hard to balance them both, because I try to, luckily, my son is uh, highly uh, in love with tattoos, and I've been teaching him art since he was five years old, so I uh, don't have too much of a separation. My son uh, seems to be going down the same path, and I'm uh, extremely excited to share that with him. Getting to do that is, is great. Trying to find ways also to balance out your relationships in life, that, it's always interesting, but I think it's necessary to have a good balance. I find myself to be happier that way. I can have a little balance of art, a balance of family. So the combination of family, love, friends, and art is uh, pretty much the path I'm, I'm searching for. Suppose I really appreciate anything that's extremely detailed, and that can vary from surreal artwork, fantasy, portraiture. I feel like as long as I can also be creative with it and add a lot of detail to it, I really enjoy that. Such as this piece right here, uh, it's something where Andrews has allowed me to do something from my imagination and uh, add as much detail as possible, so uh, I really enjoy that. Anything where I can combine fantasy and realism together is probably my favorite thing right now.
few years ago I started tattooing. I started with one particular album. I had this collector come in and he said he wanted me to do a freehand owl on his chest. He had said that he said it was okay if I did a little bit of fantasy combined with it, a little bit of realism. He wanted a skull involved in it. So I did the piece. It had such a huge response and I enjoyed doing it so much. The client loved it and uh, actually out of most of all my work, that particular owl had had the hugest response out of everything I've ever done. So you know, on one particular free day when I had a cancellation, I was sitting on the couch sketching and drawing in my room, and I thought, I thought to myself, uh, I should develop more with the owls. I was thinking, you know, about Joe Capabianco, how he develops his girls, and Guy Hutchison, how he develops his biomag. And I, I know that in this industry, it's a really good thing to be able to develop your own style, just so you can have something that kind of belongs to you and it's, it's yours. And, I remember looking at some um, images of the owls. I tried to remember as many of the features as possible of the owls so that I didn't ever have to really uh, just copy something off the computer. It was something where I just took the main features that stood out to me and then I just manipulated them. Gave them an identity, gave it a name, you know, called my series the Owl King series and continued just drawing them back to back to back. And I found that after um, I had had such a huge response for that and as I was posting up images of all the sketches and the drawings and each drawing I was doing, every sketch I was doing I was writing you know, small little quotes or poems or um, something to go along with it, factoids about the owl and um, I got such great feedback from them. people just kept trickling in. It's not necessarily that I chose specifically to say that I wanted to be the guy that was always doing owls, it was just that I kept having such a great feedback from all my collectors about the owls and they kept coming in and so I kept designing a new style of owl. Uh, keeping it similar so that someone could identify that it was my owl, make sure that each one was unique, try to find a different way to portray them. As long as there are people out there that like my owls, I'll continue to make them. I, I enjoy them. There are so many great meetings to the owl. Am I an owl? I suppose, in theory, <laughs> if I was to say there was an owl I'd want to be, I suppose the attributes of an owl are, are <laughs> worthy enough to that I would choose to be an owl. As long as I could combine a couple other animals, maybe a wolf and something else. But uh, the owl is pretty cool. It's a, it's a predator, it's wise, it's a, as a, mystic feel of watching over the dead as they transcend to the, the next stage of the afterlife. Am I an owl? I'm maybe, uh, maybe in spirit. Maybe in spirit. Check, 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 make it a mat, make it a mat. Random factoid. I am pretty uh, health conscious, so I suppose that's an unusual fact of uh, you know, probably someone in the tattoo industry where you know, we get this rock and roll uh, kind of persona sometimes. I, I'm the opposite. So I suppose that's a strange little factoid to share. This is pretty good, huh? Yeah, that's good. That's pretty nice. Don't really need to get, don't need to sell a burger or anything like that. Just, <laughs> you know.